Hi, everyone. I am Tiffany Brooks, interior designer here in the Chicagoland area, sitting here with design phenom, Amy Storm. I mean, Amy, you do amazing work. So I have to tell you, it's just an honor to just be sitting here, you know, hanging out, talking about kitchens and baths and trends and things that influence us. So, you know, before we get started and we start taking questions, by the way, we can take questions live here. And then we also have some pre questions to ask you. And this is one of the things I love to ask designers all the time. Personally, uh -huh. like if you were given an unlimited budget, what would be your ideal design style for your dream kitchen? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a great question. Okay. Um, I think, uh, so I love kind of a transitional, which I is a very sort of broad answer because transitional to one person and another person could be, you know, an opposite ends of the spectrum. That's true. Um, but integrated with modern, clean, simple um, appliances, technology, light fixtures, and then just this like overriding um, element of warmth in the space. Oh yeah. I want it to feel super inviting and welcoming to anybody who can come in. So that would kind of be my ideal situation. Yes. yes. See, I am one of those girls that I need color. I need wallpaper. I reference like what I'm wearing and the Something like that in such a permanent space uh -huh. for me is a little bit bold. But if I were going to do my dream kitchen, I can see like cabinets, probably with copper accents, an amazing tile. So probably something like very, very collected mm -hmm. and very eclectic would be like my ideal kitchen. Yeah. And obviously layered with the technology and the conveniences because, you know, that's where kitchens are. Yep. Ways. You know, using them a lot different. You know, we're experiencing our house different. And I would love that kitchen too, by the way. I, I can see the beauty in that and how awesome it would be. And I think, you know, for me, it's one thing. And then for a client, what they want and what their personal style is, is really kind of what drives that, the direction of how much color we do, how yes. much texture we do, wall covering, tile, all those kinds of things. Yeah. It's cool when you have like a client that can, you know, both be bold and sensible and trust, mm -hmm. you know, you as yes. a designer. All right. So I guess we're going to be taking questions throughout this um, about trends, kitchens, baths, so we can gear those mm -hmm. up. In the meantime, we can be talking about the showroom and some yeah. of the, the cool things that you can find throughout. Um, we use Ferguson, you know, a lot for, I do the HGTV Smart Home. And, you know, they typically provide a lot of our appliances through here. We come through yeah. here to find, you know, inspiration mm -hmm. with the newest ideas and any new tech features. Are you finding that your clients nowadays are asking for like anything? Are you doing anything differently in your kitchens yeah. that are that you haven't seen before? Any shifting trends that you can find? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one of the things we've noticed in the last couple of years and with several of our projects right now is sort of this butler's pantry behind the kitchen that has become almost like a glorified mini kitchen. Oh. So, you know, what started just as shelves is now extra sink beverage fridge, coffee maker, water bottle filler, um, a place to make your smoothies, a place to make your tea, a place for the kids to make their toast in the morning. Um, these oh, are actually yeah. some examples of some that we've done where Gorgeous. we have the extra ovens, the, the, um, the steam ovens, the coffee makers, uh, refrigerator drawers. So, and I, I think fam families are like really enjoying a place that their kids can go and kind of mess up that space. Yes. And, and keep the kitchen the pretty. Clean. Kitchen. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And if it's a large house and it's the kind of house that's geared for entertaining, that people could be in there mm -hmm. serving, preparing food, messing up the sink in that space, and yes. really allowing the house to still be open to entertaining without a big disaster everywhere. So that's so cool. That yeah. is so cool. I, again, when some of the trends that I find that people come to me for, are the bold ideas like I have done a kitchen it was actually the house beautiful kitchen and they and it was the in-law suite we used a lot of the copper metal tiles mm -hmm. in there 
I did some custom inset cabinetry and that kitchen was all about fashion. Mm. So I think I have that too, that picture of that kitchen. But the what I'm finding is, is that people are finally looking at their houses, especially that we have been in them post pandemic, right. Right. adding the personality and the touches mm -hmm. that they want, and then doing conveniences, just yeah. like you said, with those hidden butler's pantries mm -hmm. that are working 10 times harder. You know, people are really thinking about, you know, how to make my spaces live. If you think about it, we are definitely the chefs in our house. Yeah. Yep. You know, with this pandemic, I don't I know that I became a cook out of nowhere. Right. <laughs> Just right. out of nowhere. And I, I became didn't... very good at ordering my <laughs> <laughs> but you know with the in, in there are even gadgets and tech out there that you can actually order food to a kitchen, which is yeah. a, crazy true yeah you know so I, I find that people are being you know they're seeing that kitchen as a place of not just being utilitarian mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. being fashion forward you're finding lighting in yeah. the kitchen that is stylish yeah. and oversized yeah. and dramatic people are adding you know wallpapers mm -hmm. and then it's doubled down with the technology like touchless sinks yep. and yep. you know all like what you said like yep. the butler's pantries yeah. yes and i think that kind of on top of that when you have like a really solid structure your the bones of your kitchen are very solid bringing in wall covering and decorative light fixtures those are things you can change mm -hmm. without a huge expense right so getting the right appliances getting the right plumbing fixtures getting the right style of cabinets mm -hmm. like that is so important and then those other things are just beautiful layers that can be changed over time and updated over time you know just as trends change mm -hmm. um without a huge added expense okay and i think we have a question all right <laughs> i'm super casual you guys so okay oh i love this question okay so my my path is crazy. Okay, you go first. So okay, so the question <laughs> is is how did you get started in design? Okay. It's weird. I was in high-end residential property management back in the 90s. This it goes all the way back to then. I am that old. Yes. Um <laughs> so I was in, in the 90s and my boss took me I had a breakdown over a budget because we had a vicious snowstorm in April. My boss was in Florida. Mm -hmm. He didn't understand why I was paying $20,000 of snow removal in April because we're in Illinois yeah. and you're not. Yeah. That's the answer. <laughs> so I freaked out on him and I quit my job that day. He had no property manager. He called me back. He was like, <laughs> chill out, Tiffany. Why don't you take, you know, some, he said some weeks, mm -hmm. some weeks to do the model. We in design land know it doesn't take weeks right. to do a model. So he gave me, he gave me a couple months to depart from my job, redo this model and the model came out okay. Yeah. So my boss, I know he, I know he's not watching, but he got fired <laughs> and he knew it. So anyway, <laughs> he was on his way out. He bet me money that there was an apartment association award, the Cammies every uh -huh. year. He bet me that if that model home won, I would have to quit residential design, go to school, uh -huh. redo my career and be an interior designer when I grow up. Okay. Yeah. If not, He's going to give me two weeks off because he pushed me over the edge. Oh, my gosh. So lo and behold, the model home one, I beat out professional designers awesome. in Chicagoland. It was a full government model. I was very proud of myself. So I had to pay up on my bet. So I quit my corporate job, took my free time, went back to school and started my design business in 2007. Wow. <laughs> I have a far less dramatic situation, but I would say in seventh grade, I knew I wanted to be a designer. I would like decorate my room and then set up. I, I just would see a magazine and have to kind of replicate that in my room. But I did go to design school and I didn't know really what I was getting into. I thought I was mm -hmm. just going to kind of be picking fabrics and things like that. And actually my first, um, semester I had a drafting class and I picked up the skill and I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't know how to use this thing. Oh. And I, I was at Iowa state and they, I think they only took 30 people in the program. There were about 150 people trying. Very good school. Thank you. Very good school. For but design. after yep. two years you had to apply to get in mm -hmm. with your portfolio. And I remember a teacher saying like, you should just quit now. Like the, mm -hmm. you're, you don't know how to do anything. And I don't, for other entrepreneurs out there, if somebody tells me I can't do something, I will be like, 
I, I will prove you, you wrong. Suck it. So exactly. Yes. Yeah. And so, I mean, I just like dove in and I actually fell in love with the interior architecture of a house, like learning what's behind a wall or how does the HVAC work or how does the, how does plumbing work? All of those things. Like I just kind of became enamored with it. So, um, Fast forward, I got a job working for a hospitality design firm right out of college, and I worked there for 10 years, and then I had my baby and needed to just be at home. So kind of worked on my own uh, for a decade until I was ready to expand the office. So um, 2017, my husband came on board as my business partner, and I, I don't know, the business went whoop, kind of grew and exploded really fast. So. Wait, whoa. <laughs> did you just give your husband kudos a I little did. bit? I did. give my husband kudos, yes. Oh, my gosh. He, yeah. Yes, he had my back. I mean, I had no social media presence. I had nothing online. It was 100% word of mouth, which was great. But it was time to kind of grow and expand and right. tap into those things that I had learned 10 years earlier, you know, working in hospitality design. So, um, Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. I think that like anything and like any passion that anyone can have, we all fall upon it on different ways. We do. Yeah. All of our paths are so different, but nonetheless interesting. I love that you just <laughs> threw out to your husband because you know you do. When we are as as interior designers, we actually are psychologists. You know, we're so oh, we're we yeah. have to have a psych major yeah. to deal with half the counselor, clients. And I'm so designer. glad we're out here talking <laughs> to our people. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, and to have the, something like that, a backbone, mm -hmm. you know, in your business and to actually see a marked yes. improvement. Yeah. You know, that's something yes. that's something to take away. It's good to have somebody uh, to kind of like yes. you level or calm you down. Cause I probably am more of an emotional and design emotionally, you know, and you need somebody to kind of be like, wait, just stop, take a breath. Think about it. Think about it. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't hit send. Okay. So, <laughs> right. Okay. So that's it. I have a question for you. Okay. And this is something that we can talk through because as I get older, as a designer, some of the, some of my feelings about this change, but it's, it is an emotional profession. Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with, and I'm going to go there. Yeah. How do you deal with clients who are challenging and can affect, you feel that emotional yeah. effect on you. Yeah. I am in a lot of different Facebook groups yeah. and it's one of those questions that's asked a lot as a designer, you know, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? How do you, you know, take back control of the project? Yes. Uh, that's a great question. So I am definitely like a attack conflict right away. I don't like anything's doing. So the second I start to feel that with yep. somebody, I really try and get in with a phone call, clear it up, but mm -hmm. it does happen. There are times where clients become very challenging yeah. just, and um, it kind of infiltrates the entire office. It does. Because everybody, it's like the phone rings and you're like, oh no, it's going to be another one of those things. So First is I try and identify those red flags before I say yes to the project. Very good. <laughs> and weed yes. them out. Yes. I have like a 90% success rate, but I mean, I, and that's taken me like 20 years to perfect that. But, um, so I don't deal with it very often, but when we do, we really try and like get in and, and right. address it right away. Right. And, um, you know, yeah, it, you know, it's it, hard. it is hard. It is hard. You know, I find that, you know, when we are, you know, working with clients, you know, their home is their most personal space. Yeah. So they are right. going to it's be very emotional. It is personally, yeah. you know, attached to it. And I do, I'm more of a nurturer mm -hmm. with my clients. Yeah. So I would be the designer to come in there with some muffins. Uh -huh. Let's <laughs> talk about it and come into the office over some Prosecco and I nurture yeah. it back to yes. it. And then we figure out, you know, the root of the problem. Yes. So I'm a kiss and makeup designer. Yes. 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 Okay. We have another question. All right. Let's see what that is. How much education and certification do I need to get hired as a designer? I guess that differs from firm yeah, to firm, position sure to position. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I would say um, I can only speak to the requirements in my firm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, you know. Yeah. I mean, I require a design degree mm -hmm. um, in order. To, and I think that that's not to be like snooty or something because there are a lot of incredibly talented people out there that are working in the design industry that don't have the degree, but there is a certain level of education and knowledge that comes with the mm -hmm. degree. And in my business, for me personally, I feel like that's incredibly important. So, um, 
Now that's for designers, but we have a lot of other people that help that's us with say. social media, with staging, um, with talented with, people. Yes, incredibly talented people, even with um, FF and E selections sometimes. So it really depends on the role that we're trying to fill. Right. So, so in my firm, I as well, I do require a design degree if you are going to be an interior designer. Um, we don't, we, the designers typically handle all of our finished selections, all of the drawings in there. Mm -hmm. And Amy is right. There are certain things that you're taught in school that, you know, I mean, geez, you can't, we can't spend weeks training somebody right. how to read right. prints, right. you know, they're, right. you know, we have or how to, to draw or how, like to, knowing draw, how to draw yes. on a stud with a marker on a job site to ex like Explain. get across what you're trying to do. Yeah. It's imperative. Yes. So, so there are certain talents that are ingrained in you know a particular yeah. design you know path that you need in order to get a job now yeah. i have had a, a I'll, I'll call her a rising star she did actually start with me before she was done with her design degree mm -hmm. and she went to iowa state oh good. yep and then you know she just she moved up on the ranks yeah. her, her name is rachel she's actually moving to another design firm in florida so she's, her growth is crazy yeah. but yeah i would say degree is key yeah. um and at most times if you're on a senior level Level, trying to get a position experience yes for sure would definitely yeah. be needed you know a strong portfolio yeah. but there are other there are other avenues to get your toe in the door you yeah. know just like with anything my path was way different you know I kind of had my first little decorating project yeah. and then you know I went to school you found your secret skill. yeah <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's 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 different for everyone and plus I feel like in education you know, you, you often get to know you yep. found your passion yep. with that, yeah. with an education, you're exposed to so many different avenues in interior design, yeah. you know, commercial hospitality, high end residential mid and, yeah. you know, yeah. things like that. So, so yeah. yeah, I would also say that like, just because you have a million degrees or letters after your name doesn't necessarily mean you're the best person for a job. Like that's true. being able to talk with people, deal with them when they're stressed out, uh, work collaborati collaboratively within the office and with contractors, like that's the whole package for us. Right. So we want the fun, kind, energetic person mixed with the skill set. And that for us is like the perfect. She's match. telling you guys yeah. how to interview. <laughs> yes, I am. With her, design for, yeah. <laughs> with her design firm. Yeah. And she just got, <laughs> she just gave you all of the That's nuggets. Right. Yeah. All of the nuggets yeah. needed. Okay. So what are you, what are you typically seeing people request for specifically in their kitchen appliances mm -hmm. nowadays? Yeah. Because we are, I'm, I'm hearing that over 60% of Americans now are considering or in the middle of some sort of kitchen renovation. Yes. So what are yeah. you seeing like as far as, you know, the specifics and the needs go mm -hmm. of their kitchens? Yeah. Um, well, people definitely are interested in technology. So okay. smart appliances, smart faucets yeah. that, you know, you can just wave by and the water comes on. Yeah. Um, some of the things that we're putting into almost all kitchens are like, instant hot water and steam ovens and um, water bottle fillers and all the, all these sort of modern conveniences that just make everything about your day go a lot easier. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. So what we're, we're seeing that trend and I don't even think it's a trend. It is where we're going yeah. with our kitchens. It's how we're living nowadays. Yep. We are almost coming to expect to have yes. that, yes. you know, yeah. Oh, I think we have another question. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's see what the question is. All right. What trends and influences are you seeing across <laughs> the country? Okay. <laughs> That's a good question. It's a good question. Okay. We're in, yeah. we're in Ferguson showroom. So I guess what we can do is we will kind of narrow that down to kitchens and baths. Maybe we should switch it up and talk bath for a second. Sure. Yeah. So for me, I, I feel maybe this is me self-imposing it. Modern farmhouse is very much alive, but I am waiting for modern farmhouse to no longer be alive. I would agree. Okay, good. Okay, I mean, you know, you never know. You never know. You know your audience, but I'm finding that that is what the clients are wanting. Yeah. You know, and I feel like you know a certain network unnamed. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's kind of driving that, you know. And, you know, clients are, you know, are wanting what they're seeing and it's being put in front of them. So yeah. are you still seeing people just asking for modern farmhouse by the droves or are we getting out of that? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, we didn't actually dabble in it too much. Okay. Um, but yes, I am seeing it like when people are giving us inspiration pictures and stuff, we're seeing bits and pieces of it. So I think what we always try and do is elevate it to like more of a modern, spectacular, high-end farmhouse situation. Yes. Um, Did you have one? You had a, I think I saw I a kitchen. I think we do have a kitchen. Do you that, have a kitchen that yeah, you can show me? Because I felt that, I saw yeah. when you were scrolling through your pictures. Yes, it was, I was a like, white kitchen with big Yes, I was it. like, yeah. this is how yeah. I would do farmhouse. So this, this started as modern farmhouse. And if you look at the exterior of the house, it has that vibe. Yeah, mm. it's uh, exterior is board and batten and it's um, standing seam roof and it's, white and black. So on the inside, we wanted to take a much more modern approach to it. So we kept the beams very simple. We kept the cabinetry very um, clean and beautiful and white and bright. And we integrated all kinds of different metals and modern light fixtures and stuff into it. So that would be like the perfect example of elevating, kind of elevating the farmhouse situation. Yeah. The one thing I will say ab about that trend is I I think it kind of broke us out of this habit of doing everything the same way mm -hmm. because people were trying different, especially in a bathroom, different sinks and different faucets and different tiles and vintage mixed with new and all that kind of stuff. So I can see like the, the way it's influenced the industry, yes. but I don't want to sit there very long. Yes. <laughs> I am of the same. I am actually in my car packed with the gas on uh -huh. ready to leave. Yes. Okay. <laughs> You can, you can come, come into you. yes, you can come to my car. <laughs> but yeah, when I saw that that photo you were scrolling you. through it, I, I said to myself, I was like, that is an amazing kitchen, and pe more people need to see how to do farmhouse and elevate yeah, upwards towards yeah, it. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Yes. Um, okay, so some more questions that I have. We were actually starting to talk a little bit more about bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Um, and we 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 kind of hinged on it into, you know, like the touchless faucets and things like that. Yeah. But any trends in bathrooms that you're starting to yeah. see, I am a tech girl. Okay. So I have all kinds of things that brew in my head. But do you have any requests from clients, you know, coming mm -hmm. from, you know, a bathroom standpoint? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm. I, first of all, I would say people have gotten over the last couple of years, so maybe not super current trend, but definitely the way things are going is people have become more comfortable with mixing tiles and doing like something more colorful in their bathroom instead of just the sterile right. environment, which has been great. Um, mixing in woods and other finishes. Uh, but we've just found, especially in master bathrooms, mm -hmm. people really want those rooms to be super efficient for them, just like a kitchen would be. Oh, yeah. And we recently just did a cabinet for a gentleman that it just looks like a cabinet from the outside. But when you open it up, it was built for him. He's very tall. He wanted all of his shelves at a certain height. He wanted extra outlets in it for charging and shavers and all kinds of stuff. And then we actually built the side rails of the cabinet really wide so we could recess a, a mirror that would that was hardwired in that would come out so we could shave cool. right at the right yes. height. So just really accommodating all the needs for them so their lives in the morning are easy. He's a busy man. He's got to get up and go to work and he wants all these modern conveniences right there. Right there yeah. at his fingertips. I actually did a bathroom and and it was again for the for the smart home franchise. Well, I love things that are motion activated, yeah. motion censored, and I love active storage and yeah. I love storage that is meaningful, much mm -hmm. like what you built for the, for your yeah. client. So, you know, I've done one of those things where I will retrofit a cabinet to where a coffee pot mm -hmm. comes out of it, but yet <laughs> exactly. it's fitted, the top of it is fitted for a nice little tray. So yeah. you can, you know, you can have your toothbrush here and then you press a button and then you have a coffee That's maker fantastic. that pops up. So, you know, looking for things that, you know, definitely make, you know, home feel a lot more like home mm -hmm. instead of doing, you know, the simple plugs, you know, some right. people are even adding the USB plugs mm -hmm. to their bathrooms, which I think is yeah. genius. You know, we've is. been doing yeah. it for years on islands. Right. We are charging devices right. much the in same way in yeah. our bathroom as well. Yep. All right. We have another, another question. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's up. 
Um, is it good or bad to follow a trend when designing a kitchen? Can it make it outdated faster? I feel like our answers will be yeah, different. We, yeah. <laughs> okay. We kind of talked about that we a little did. bit earlier too. We but, did. Yeah. I feel as if if you love it, it's not going to die with you. For example, <laughs> I have I rendered a mint green kitchen, I would say five years ago, and I was still by that mint green kitchen and I rendered it for myself for my own home today. So that's something that really, really touched me. I fell in love with it. It yeah. functions well. So I am not one that typically would necessarily start. At, a, at your typical white kitchen, you know, with the shaker cabs and less specifically yeah. requested, or I'm finding that mm -hmm. pattern in what the client is submitting to me mm -hmm. for inspirational pictures. You know, if they are, if they are seeing that they're, if I'm seeing that they're submitting all these photos of white kitchens, I'm not going to do gr uh, black cabinets, yeah. which right. I actually, right. of course. which I absolutely you have to listen. love. Yeah. yeah, you have to listen. Yeah. So, I would say no. I am I am of that of that of that person mm -hmm. that could get away with a green kitchen or a pink yeah. kitchen or something like that and feel comfortable about it. Yeah. Do yeah. you think that going a little bit bolder with a kitchen is like a I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it totally depends on the client. Okay. There are some people that they just want the fun. Yes. And they're not afraid to do it. Okay. And when that's the case, I'm all in, sign okay. me up. But I think the majority of our clients, and maybe that's more my clientele, yeah. is like the more for the solid, this thing will last you for 20 something years. And maybe we're going to change the lights or we're going to change the hardware or something like that. So it really depends. I mean, we could be all over the spectrum. Yeah. Just really depends on and what maybe, our client is bringing. And maybe I am maybe I'm kind of harshly judging myself. Maybe I'm not too bold, but you know, a lot of it, I get oh, a lot of I, cabinets in the kitchen are, that's a bold choice. It, okay. Okay. <laughs> it is a bold choice. I'll, I think I'll it fall depends back. too on like the size of the space, the budget mm -hmm. of the project, all those things. Yes. You know, I, every, everything has to kind of be weighed. It does. In the process, it so. does. I, and I typically go for the gusto. Yeah. Sometimes people ask <laughs> me back other times that they don't. Yeah. Yes. Um, but oh, we have another question. Oh, sorry, I was going to get into yeah, Amy's head about lighting. Okay, okay, but no, oh, but, I like nice lighting too. <laughs> oh, should I remodel the space for me or for oh. resale? I have a follow up question to that, yeah. honestly, because yeah. I, to me, it I don't know about for you, yeah. but it really depends on when you're moving. Yeah, it does. It yeah. does because you're to me. I feel like however much you're you're renovating, you have to break that down into yeah. a per year situation. If yeah. you're talking about moving in five years and you're going to spend seventy five thousand on a renovation, divide that by seventy five, mm -hmm. and is that number worth paying for your? happiness right. for those five right. years. Right. That's how right. I look at that. Right. Right. So it, you know, I would have to re-ask that question to the asker. Yeah. How There's long a lot are you going to be in the involved. house? Yeah. 10 years is kind of like, yeah, if I'm, if I'm not moving for 10 years or if I have a kid that I know will be in college and high school yeah. around here, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and push the button and renovate for more for me. But if I am looking to sell within five yeah. years, yeah. that is when you're looking to renovate for resale. Mm -hmm. And you're starting to look for those common factors of homes that have been selling right. well, you know, right. in or your house. Or something that the majority of the people would like. So don't exactly. put orange cabinets. Don't in. no mint green. If you really love orange or mint green. Don't throw do it, it on your wall covering. Don't do it. But if, there's, your if you're safe for ten years, you can yeah. If you stay for ten years, then you can go orange. Yes, or mint. Or, right. The five. <laughs> yeah. No, listen to listen to Amy exactly that. Yes, <laughs> safety first. Safety first. Okay, so with that, with, okay, so what's the boldest color you've ever done in cabinetry? Oh, oh. I mean, we've done green and we've done blue and yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely we do colors, but it's, I would just say probably the majority of them are in like some sort of a white or a wood or a black, like something that's just more neutral. Yeah. yeah. But um, absolutely. We've done cabinets and metal mm -hmm. and a lot of mixed finishes yes. and it just really is so client dependent. It really is yeah. so client dependent. It is. It is. 
Okay, so as far as one question that I, I have for you and how you work with your clients is from what I find when you are starting the process, going back to kitchens, uh -huh. picking out a kitchen, appliance shopping. Yeah. That is so personal to me. It is. Do yeah. you find that you are getting clients who want you to handle it all? Yeah. Or are, are you one of those designers to where I'm like, it's almost like just not a mattress. You really got to yeah. get in and drive yes. the appliances. You got to yes. get into a showroom, feel it, see what it does. Mm -hmm. Which side are you on? Are you able to confidently shop for appliances? Oh, yes. I would say I'm a little bossy when it comes to that. So, I mean, when we get into designing the kitchen, we are actually specifying the appliances. Gotcha. And then we're, we kind of give our clients a list and say, this is what we think you should use. Yep. These are the sizes. Now go to Ferguson and open the doors and turn the knobs and do all those things. But yes. we really drive the selections okay. unless they've pre-shopped and they've come to us and said, you know, we, we want this particular microwave mm -hmm. or this particular beverage fridge. I had it in my old house and I love it and I have to have it again. Fine. We'll work those things in. Yep. But absolutely. We, we tend to drive the selections. Um, and that's based on experience. It's based on what we know will work for them. It's based on their budget, you know, kind of their list of wants, all those things. Right. So, right. Yeah. Do you, do you pre-select them too? What we you... do, so what we do is we give them the size finish and then we okay. have a questionnaire that they fill out. Okay. And then we kind of know what they're looking for, but yeah. then we tell them on a Saturday or whenever you're yeah. free, go test drive, mm -hmm. fill out everything, see how you like it. Because yeah. what you think you like, you might not right. like or need. Right. You might not like the handle exactly. or something. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. What so we have question? another question. <laughs> Tell oh. me more about steam ovens. <laughs> I okay. feel like I put one in every project. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, steam ovens, I feel like that they are going to be in every house. Yeah. Probably. I can, I, yeah, we yeah. can, we can definitely say that with confidence. Yeah. Steve up, steam up, what, what other appliances will be in every house? I think that you're going to have, I think that you're going to definitely have coffee systems in every house. Yeah. Um, um, we are, there's not going to be any departure away from the touchless, mm -hmm. you know, especially with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, what other yeah. appliances can you think of that are not going to ever go anywhere? Mm. Would even be like in a mid-level. Yeah. I Well, I, the one thing I would say is that with the steam oven, we've actually had a reduction in micro built-in microwaves. Because what we found is that people just need like a little microwave to heat up their coffee or to pop their popcorn. And so we'll take a little one and stick it in a pantry and totally eliminate that appliance from the kitchen Yes, when they have the steam. So, but the, but people do have to train on how to use it. Cause we have put them in and people are like, I haven't used it for a year because I can't figure it out. It's like, they need to sit down and hunker down and do it. And once, once they know they'll cook a Turkey in it, they'll make all oh, kinds yeah, of their crazy life things will change. They love it. And, they, their yeah. lives will definitely change. Yeah. And you know, I don't even know. Does Ferguson do that? Does Ferguson train you on how to? It could, I don't know. We don't I think know. you can go to training dinners for your brands and kind of get the shtick. But yes. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So is there any more questions in the, in the audience or coming from anywhere else? Oh, here's one. What is the relationship between design Fashion like and design. Technology. <laughs> yeah. it is. They're really, they're really, really it's like a cyclone. Blah, 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 blah. I love it though. <laughs> that's how my brain works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what is the, so that's easy. I figure, I obviously to me, um, interior design definitely follows fashion. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And technology is applied to function. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like the umbrella of where we're definitely mm -hmm. going. Um, do you start, well, as designers, we're always taught to start with function, mm -hmm. then yep. apply the fashion, mm -hmm. and then the technology goes in with the function. Is yeah, that kind of how your brain yeah. kind of sits yeah. with a project? Yeah. Where do you start? Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's, That's a good it question. It is a good question because I find that every designer answers yeah it differently. Yeah. So we have a kind of a process in our office where um, we develop what we call the client's design DNA. Yep. And that is 
So every project, and this is something that I feel like I'm really proud about what our office produces is that none of our projects look the same, but they have this like strand of expertise and high level of detail and finishes and all that kind of stuff woven into them. And that is derived by this DNA. So as you sit down with a client, you find out they're totally into fashion. They're, you know, they love to travel. They love to cook. They hate to cook all that kind of stuff. Yep. And we kind of create this imagery and this package for them that like, this tells a story of you and who you are and how you're going to live in this house. And then we base all of our decisions off of that. So um, and you get all, I mean, you have people that want a high end kitchen that never cook. And mm -hmm. then you have people that have a high end kitchen and they cook like crazy Yep. and they're also totally into fashion and they also love to do all these. So all of those things get really wound up in that initial DNA package. I think people call it different things yes. but in our office. That's just an easy to grasp concept for us and for our clients. And I love that because as something like that will evolve, mm -hmm. you know, you're coming up with different names and different yes. design yeah, styles right. that only, you know, suit that one that client. That particular client. Yeah. Yes. Right. I, I kind of start the same way. You know, okay. we, we obviously start with programming mm -hmm. and all of these questions yeah that built that story yeah. upon the client. And then what we do is then we go back and in our mind, we stick in what they sent us for inspiration. Right. And mm -hmm. then we go back and we translate it to how we saw it. Yes. And then we yeah. meet with a client to figure out where we are, yes. you know, which road do we take upon? Yep. And then that's kind of what unblooms yep. and starts all the selections the and the way. color story. Yeah. So yeah, it's so, it's so cool just to be able to sit down yeah. with another designer and just, you know, pick this process yeah. apart, I love you it. know, talk kitchens yeah. and baths and yeah. everything like that. Yeah. Yes. We're in our own like special world. We are right? in our own <laughs> world. Okay. We have another question. Okay. Please explain the difference between, oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. explain the difference between a steam oven and a convection oven. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I think I, the simple answer is that steam how, uses water yes. <laughs> to cook. So where the convection is how the air is circulating. Electricity but, coils yeah. and things like that. So as the, the theory behind steam is I, this is how old school I am. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you used to bake in a regular oven and your mother would put a pan yes. of water yeah. under yeah. it? So that pan of water actually works in different food mm -hmm. applications to cook a little bit more evenly and to actually make like food moisture, more flavorful, yeah. uh -huh. yep. moisture. So it is a different way of cooking that produces, I don't, I don't want to say a better quality because I'm yeah. still a fan of gas. I well, mean, but it's also like if you're reheating, yes. to reheat with water versus with microwaves exactly it's, it's just better it's just, for you it's just better yeah the so radiating is exactly option. it is yeah. definitely a healthier option and definitely you know an up and coming and uh and i wouldn't even call it a trend but it will yeah, be a necessity it will be yeah. a necessity in kitchens you know moving forward definitely yeah. moving forward oh my god we're yeah. having so much fun I with know. you i know <laughs> okay so let's talk about lighting Okay. Okay. So obviously there's different levels of lighting. Yeah. Specifying on a kitchen, are you a fan of being of the dramatics? Are you a mm -hmm. fan of, you know, something timeless and classic? Yeah. Or are you totally client specific? Do you ever do anything that's so crazily stupid, oversized <laughs> over an island just because you felt like yeah. it? Or yeah. do you follow a strict set of rules? I, you know, it's funny because when you go to design school, they give you almost like a formula to figure they out do. like how big the light fixture should be and where it should hang. And I feel like all those rules have sort of been blown out of the water over the years. Um, there still are some, like you don't want a light fixture bigger than the table, but right. you know, the, uh, common sense things. But um, yeah, I think some clients, a lot of them are actually way more willing to go crazy with the light fixtures. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I feel like it's the jewelry, the icing on the cake. It's a, it's the game changer. The, but the, the funny thing is like, in in our world, the way lighting falls in the sequence of construction, it's sort of at the end. 
And one of the problems is that people blow this budget and that budget and that budget when it gets to the lighting. Oh, they're like, yeah. Oh. So I always want a healthy lighting budget and I do everything I can to protect that budget on the with the other ones. Exactly. You know, try and sticking within those allowances because we understand the importance of the lights. Right. And then one thing I would say, I don't know if you've seen this change, but I was <laughs> years ago, I was almost adamantly opposed to using LED lighting because I didn't like the color or it felt like too modern or, but now there's Once so you, many options. There out are there. so many LED so options. Good. Once you figure out color temperatures yes. and other things yes. like that and how to achieve the look that you want yeah. with the room with LED, yeah. it's, it's the solution. It's amazing. It is what you do. Yeah. It is what the go-to is. Yeah. We just did a whole house where we didn't have one light bulb in the lighting budget because all the lights were LED and they were integrated in the light fixtures. And I kept going back and looking at it. Going, Are we sure we're not missing something? Yet? Yes. But yeah, it is the way of the future. It and, is. Um, it's pretty amazing how many beautiful options there are that you can use now. Yeah. And then too, also being able to achieve different levels of lighting. Right. You know, I feel that LED is, you know, it, it definitely did solve a variety of problems right. that we, you know, that we face as designers because, you know, mm -hmm. we create this beautiful product and why is that gray looking purple? Right. And it's just like, right. you know, you know, right. it's, it, it right. definitely is. We don't like repainting walls. We don't we like to know ahead walls. of time how it's going to look. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, um, I have a question for you. Okay. Do, do we have any other questions that I can that I can ask of you before I have? Okay, we do have we do have another question before I ask you your first okay. question. Okay. 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 How has COVID shaped and changed design? That is a oh, very God. oh my <laughs> gosh. Okay. Uh, I mean, besides the, like the state of the world just being out of control right now from a design standpoint because yes. everybody is remodeling and nobody can get any materials. I mean, it's changed our processes for everything. Even uh, our contractors, we were on a job site recently and um, I was telling the contractor, I'm like, you're going to have to do this before this and then we're going to paint and then we're going to install cabinets. Like we're doing everything out of order exactly, just to stay on track from like a scheduling standpoint. So I think we've all been challenged to rethink the processes that we have and right. how we do things and the order in which we do things. We need to order lights now on the front end of things and worry about tile maybe later. So, I mean, that has definitely changed. Isn't that um, different? Our, yes, it's crazy. I remember when COVID started. Uh -huh. I I remember sitting in my on my kitchen table. It was March fourteenth, mm -hmm. twenty twenty, and they had just put the mm -hmm. quarantine in yeah. place. Yeah, my brother is a high end architect okay. in residential. Okay, and he gave me a phone call. He said, "Tiffany, this is the perfect storm that can end both of us." Yeah. Do you remember? Never the worry. I don't yeah. know if you face this the the panic attacks yeah. that I'm hearing other designers in yeah. the industry, the unknown. Yeah. Right after that, we started having the calls trickle in. Yeah. We're putting a hold on this project. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. where we have there there was a seven thousand square foot build we were working on. Mm -hmm. We're putting a hold on this. Yeah. We, yeah. I swear we got about five of those phone calls. Yeah. Three of them were heavily priced. Yeah. And that's when I started hiding in my closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was more, um, I had a little bit more panic around how does everybody work remotely and keep this business running? And for us, it actually, it was kind of weird because in January, I was like, ah, I'm way overcommitted. We have too many projects. And then we had this happen yes. and everybody worked from home and we just did as much AutoCAD and drawing and details as we could. And the strange thing that happened, though, that's hard now is all of our projects got to the same starting point. And as soon as things were able to go again, it was like all these horses just took off running all at the same at pace, same time. And they're all finishing at the same time. And so it's been like, uh, <laughs> I think we specified a thousand light fixtures or then a thousand plumbing fixtures. And then you know, it just has been overwhelming 
too much and then hard to get our hands on everything. And then all these projects finishing at the same time. Right. So it's exhausting. It is. And I'm really looking forward to the point where we're staggered again. Yes. On projects. And yeah. I just, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. And for me, I am so scared because of how I felt. Yeah. On March 15th. Yeah. yeah. To like say what ifs. no yeah. again. Right. And, right. and with everybody doing a kitchen and bath, I mean, yeah. we've been sitting at home. And that was the unexpected yeah. in the right. design industry was the reaction to everybody mm -hmm. sitting at home and looking at their outdated right. kitchens and using their outdated mm -hmm. main bathrooms right. and knowing that they needed to do something yeah. about it because their jobs were now yes. turning to 100% yes. work from yep. home. And everybody's seeing their background and it's not pretty. And, right. <laughs> and it's not yeah. pretty. Yeah, so they're picking up the phone. Right. They're right. calling us. Yep asking for new kitchens and baths yep. in four months. And can and you do it like that? Yeah. yeah. Right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I can no, do it in 2023. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. We have another question. It might be our, it might be one of our final ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you suggest mixing recess lights with chandelier and under cabinet lights? Sure. All day long. All yeah. day long. Long. You just have to be careful of your light temperatures and how yes. you how you do it. Yeah. You know? So you know, obviously, do a lighting plan for your houses. Mm -hmm. Light up the spaces that you need. I am a huge fan of different levels of lighting because mm -hmm. each task, obviously, is design school one on one. Each task, does, you know, yep. you need a different type right. of light for that. But yeah, I mix in in a kitchen, and you know, in. I just I don't even mix only the lights. I obviously mix the finishes too because yeah. I am all out with it. But yeah, I you can see one of my kitchens. You know, you'll have a chandelier under cabinet lighting. I think I've put some picture lights in yeah. a kitchen before. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it it really it really does depend yeah. on your kitchen plan, how big it is, yeah. and how much light you need. Can we squeeze in one more? We we can question. we can yes. Okay, how do you budget for a remodel? Is it based on home value or square footage? I'm saying first, but yes, I would say both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely both. Yeah. So for example, if you have a large home, but it's, you know, worth 200,000, you're not going to put the same fixtures you would have in a coastal home. That's a thousand square feet right. in, right. Uh, in Beverly be Hills. <laughs> so you have to be smart and you also yes. have to, I would say, you know, it, again, it, it goes with that whole resale question, how yep. long you're going to be there. That also does fit into, you know, how much you're budgeting on it. Mm -hmm. Because our, if you're going to be moving away from your house in three years, is it really smart to put in a huge investment into your kitchen? Right. Or do we do we just need it to get it to resale? So that also is inclusive mm -hmm. of your budget as well. Yeah. Oh, we have another question. I guess we're going to, you know what? Just we keep just asking do this all day long. We are going to be here, me and Amy, yeah. you know, answering <laughs> questions all day. How do you keep up with the technology trends? It, it can be so overwhelming. You want me to yeah. take that one? Sure. Yeah. Girl. It. Oh, it is overwhelming. <laughs> okay. So one of the things that I have to do is I, I have to keep up with technology trends because yeah. I am associated with mm -hmm. the smart home um, franchise, CES is a great source. I would say um, the consumer electronics show that happened, that used to happen in Vegas, mm -hmm. I, it's coming back, you know, the kitchens and baths, mm -hmm. they offer yep. a lot of technology yeah. and a lot of CU credits on adding technology to the homes, to the baths and to the kitchens. But I follow all of these people online on Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. I also get kitchens and baths magazine. They also yep. have a very, very good section on what's coming out, um, new trends and new technology. And then you can go to your showroom well, yeah. websites yeah. too, you yeah. know? Yeah. You can actually yeah. go and see these appliances online. All of them yeah. almost have a 3D graphic of how these appliances and new technology is constantly developing. Um, and, and if you're a trade professional, you should go to shows. Yes, we go to High Point, we'll go to, go to Atlanta, we'll go to Vegas. Like, I try and take the office, like all the designers, like every year and a half, because I feel like there's just so much being developed all the time yep. that we 
need it. Yes. You, need, you just need resources all the time. That's the only way to keep your designs fresh. Is that is the only way. New resources. Yes. And being exposed to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Actually using them and, and you falling in love with them too. Yeah. Because if oh, yeah. we can't back it up right. as designers, you know, right. then everything we're saying, yeah. you know, is basically right. fake. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We don't like to do fake. <laughs> we don't like to do fake at all. Okay, we have a we have another question. Okay, let's see it. Who are trendsetters and influencers? How do we see your work? Okay, that was a question that I was going to ask you personally. What? Okay, so all of us have a designer uh -huh. that we look up to. Uh -huh. So who is your trendsetter influencer somebody you oh stalk at night goodness do you have another designer you stalk at night i do i'm gonna just check her name to make sure i get I love, it right i love Hold this on. tell can me i do can is. i do this tell am me i allowed to look on my we're phone we're doing it so it's yeah happening. i've okay. actually sent this girl a note on um I've sent her a message just to tell her how much I how, love her stuff. And, and I actually yeah. can do the same. So Jennifer Robbins, she's out of, um, I feel like she's in like, like in Utah or Colorado or something yes. like that. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I love her designs. I just mm. think they're exquisite. And I look at them and I'm like, oh, I just see all these layers of beautiful details. And I just really admire how she pulls it all together so it's a totally different vibe yes. there than what we're doing here and i think that's the other reason why i kind of like it because sometimes i'm like oh i kind of want to steal some of that vibe and integrate it into the midwest yes so yeah i really enjoy looking at her page if i had to pick one person so i design stock two people okay i design stock michelle boyd uh-huh he's out of atlanta okay love him and i also designed stock kelly hurleyman uh-huh yeah. yeah am i saying her yeah. last name right I, yeah hurleyman she, yeah yes yeah. i yeah. met her um at an event goodness it was a couple of winters ago and i just fell in love with yeah. her and i'm like oh my god yeah. i hope she doesn't see me staring at her yeah. but that is my that's my design crush yeah. so cool. yeah it's like we do things as designers yeah. you know i think we do things as as women as people you know and one of the things that i know that i do is that i design stock you Absolutely. know we say things on instagram yeah. i get a ton of ideas i have so many different boards on yeah. insta yeah. it doesn't even it doesn't yeah. even make any sense yeah i would yes. say market is good for that stuff too because i don't know i kind of i'm kind of like a sponge when i go to those things i'll walk into a showroom and see something i kind of lock it in the same as with traveling mm. might maybe you like walk into an old church and you see a beautiful tile pattern or something and you're like i'm going to turn that into a rug someday so i love finding those kinds of things where do you keep your ideas design. well many of them are in are here you yes. <laughs> If you ask my husband, I'm kind of like a freak. I have like crazy things up here, but I do take a lot of pictures. In fact, you go through my phone, I have like a picture of my kid and then like 50 house things and then a kid and then like 50 house things. It's I would love a little to see your overwhelming. Camera. I would love to see your camera jump. I <laughs> yes. would love to see your camera jump. Okay, we have a, yet another question. God, I was way off with the timing here, but that's fine. That's how I roll. Okay, yeah. um, predictions for the next trend and in influences. Hmm. God, it's so hard. That okay, is a hard I think we did predict it. The end of um, Modern Farmhouse. Yes, I I'm think we did. It. I'm gonna. Have to I'm marking it. On that one. <laughs> <laughs> the end of modern farmhouse get rid of live laugh and love take oh that gosh. off your walls matter of fact we should get together and have a bonfire and everybody you can come bring you can yourself. come and bring everything that you bought that's telling you to eat in your kitchen oh and we'll gosh, dump hilarious. it in. we're gonna yeah. get in trouble you yeah know we that, will right? we will we, definitely they're not gonna have sorry us back. if we've offended you they're not gonna have us back <laughs> <laughs> okay so okay let's throw out our social media okay. handles okay you can yep. follow the you can beautiful <laughs> amy <laughs> storm you. design phenom at uh it's uh amy storm and co on uh, instagram and then <laughs> you can instagram. follow me at tiffany bricks and terry's on instagram yeah. and then don't forget to tag ferguson showrooms yeah at ferguson showrooms they're who got us crazy women yeah. into the showroom talking design yeah. having fun I had a blast with I did you. Too. We yeah, got to get together. Yeah. This is not over. You and I are going for drinks, girl. <laughs> like you right and now. I, and we're going, <laughs> we're going to discuss the, the, the after dark design stuff. Okay. After drinks. That's what